Okay, we're going to discuss hyperpituitaryism, which basically means that the pituitary gland is over secreting. It's over secreting, over secreting hormones. Okay, that's hyperpituitaryism. Now, uh, one common factor in hyperpituitaryism is the presence of adenomas, which means a pituitary tumor. And how they uh, differentiate is based on its size. Micro is 10 millimeters, macro is greater than 10 millimeters. Okay, that the um, adenomas. Now, what we have here, who usually gets these adenomas? Females in their teens and early 30s. Okay, now we're going to talk about hyperpituitarism and first the major manifestations, if you will. So the first major manifestations are giganticism and acromegaly. Giganticism and acromegaly. Well, giganticism is when the, uh, a teen or a youth ends up growing as much as eight feet. It is massive growth. And acromegaly is when it occurs in the adult. Acromegaly is hyperpituitarism in the adult. Okay, now there's some other manifestations of hyperpituitarism. Um, I wouldn't consider them quite center stage. Uh, however, uh, galacteria, which means excessive milk production in the female, hyperthyroidism, a topic of another discussion, Cushing syndrome, another topic of another discussion, and amenorrhea, which basically is when a woman loses her period. All right, those are some of the manifestations. So when we think of hyperpituitaryism, we're going to zero in on two major components. One, giganticism in the um, pediatric population, and two, acromegaly in the adult. All right, now a key principle involved in hyperpituitaryism is increased growth hormone secretion and increased prolactin secretion, okay? Now, it might help us to understand a little bit more about these hormones. Growth hormone, growth hormone involves when it works, if you will, when it works on the cells in our body, um, growth hormone or, not, or also called somatotropin, somatotropin, growth hormone or somatotropin, um, Basically, they get the cells, the building cells of the body, which involve bones and muscles and organs, to get to work building. And so what happens is with the adequate amount of growth hormone, the bones grow normally, the muscles grow normally, and the organs grow normally. If you take that argument, then you'd understand that if you had too much of it, you'd have too much bone production, too big of bones, uh, muscles will be affected and also the organs. All right, another key component, as we mentioned, growth hormone and prolactin. Um, prolactin would cause, excessive prolactin secretion would cause excessive milk production or galacteria. Okay, now what I'd like to look at here is what takes center stage. In hyperpituitaryism, what's going to take center stage is giganticism and acromegaly. All right, acromegaly, of course, adult onset. Giganticism, again, begins early childhood or teens. Now, to get another understanding of this, let's take a look at the bones. Okay, let's take a look at the bones. They're kind of like our indicators of uh, what's going on in this disease process. Now, as you remember the bone, uh, the normal bone has the long part called the diaphysis and the end parts called the epiphysis. And this, overly simplified of course, but this is the epiphyseal plate or growth plate. It's on both sides. And what this does, it works like stretch pants in a way. This gives the opportunity for the bone to the diaphysis to grow. And let's pretend that this is a normal bone. However, if a person has giganticism and they have over secretion of growth hormone, look what can happen to the bone. Extra what? extra long, extra long. So that's the way the growth will go. And these individuals who have giganticism can end up being greater than eight feet tall and um, over 300 pounds. 
Now, some other problems with this giganticism, we have to know, looking fast forward, there are some comorbidities. Patient has a short lifespan. Uh, they, won't re they won't live a full life, uh, by and large. Okay, now let's take a look at acromegaly, the adult component of oversecretion. Oversecretion, and in this case, in the adult onset, what we have here are, there's a normal bone, and in the adult, you know that the growth plates are closed. You've reached full growth. However, with the overabundance of growth hormone, the bones are going to grow, but they can't grow longitudinally, so what are they going to do? Wider and thicker. All right. Some other concerns um, uh, that will happen with uh, hyperpituitaryism. A little bit similar, but uh, first we have excessive growth hormone. Let's take a look at the domino effects that can occur. Uh, you remember lipids are fats in the body, and um, they're supposed to be broken down in a methodical manner and at the right time. However, what happens in hyperpituitaryism, too, uh, too much growth hormone causes the overabundance of fatty acids, and the fatty acids have a systemic effect. They affect the whole body. And in cardiovascular, what we're talking about coronary artery disease, or we're talking about a stroke, cerebral vascular accident, or PVD, peripheral vascular disease. You say, well, what's going on here? Well, fatty acids, as you know, an overabundance of them can cause atherosclerosis. And the patient who has hyperpituitarism has a greater risk for this. Let's take a look also about the blood sugar levels. We know that diabetes mellitus is on the rise in today's world. But um, what happens with growth hormone? It antagonizes the work of insulin. Well, what on earth does that mean? Well, that means that the, the job of insulin is to take glucose from the blood and help it go into the cell so the cell can use it to make energy. Well, growth hormone puts a block to that. So if it puts a block to having the glucose end up in the cell, where does it gonna remain? In the blood, and the patient can have hyperglycemia. In some cases, they may even get diabetes mellitus. Okay, some other concerns here about prolactinemia. Remember we said um, in hyperpituitaryism, too much prolactin, too much uh, growth hormone. In this case, with too much prolactin, what's gonna happen here is in the female, um, in the female, she can have amenorrhea, loser, period, galactorrhea, secretion of milk sugar, and then um, decreased vaginal lubrication. In the male, decreased libido, libido, excuse me, and impotence. Let's take a look and finish this component up with the signs and symptoms. And keep in mind the first signs and symptom, and every case may be different, but consider the first signs and symptom, visual deficits and headaches. Visual deficits are why optic nerve is being what? Compressed. The optic nerve is being what? Compressed, and that's why you get that. Also, we know that the bones in acromegaly, feet, hands, mandible, and spine are going to grow, and they're going to have distorted growth. And so it's going to have some um, distorted facial features. Organs, organs will also grow abnormally large. Soft tissues, tongue, liver, skin, spleen. In fact, with the tongue, you might have difficulty speaking. Another thing might be with the skin, I didn't put this up there, but with the skin, uh, oily and might even have times of diaphoresis. So there you go on our introduction to uh, hyperpituitarism. Thank you for listening.